Hey YouTube, Jesse here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install Windows 2000 Professional Service Pack 4 using VirtualBox, Oracle VM VirtualBox. So, this is called the VirtualBox Manager, which is similar to the Virtual PC console in Microsoft Virtual PC 2007 Service Pack 1. Alright, so, let's find it. It's, it's right here. It's a, I downloaded this like a year or two ago. It's old, but it works. I just downloaded the ISO. Okay, so it's basically this part of the setup is very similar to Windows XP Professional, as you can see. I gave it 256 megs of RAM and a 10 gig hard drive, as Windows 2000 is a really lightweight OS. It doesn't really need more than that. It's not like XP, where I would give XP like 25 gigs by default and a gig of RAM. 256 is more than enough for this operating system. Windows 2000 was a more modern NTOS, and it was one of the more stable ones. Functionality-wise, it's still a very popular OS. It's a very business-oriented operating system still, and it's and there's still a few things that make Windows 2000 very useful. For example, the latest version of OpenOffice works on it. The latest version of GIMP works on it. The latest version of Firefox works on it, and the latest version of Opera works on it, and the latest version of Thunderbird works on it, and the latest version of TeamViewer works on it. So Application-wise, it's still pretty compatible, and the latest version of VLC Media Player works on it. Just unfortunately, Chrome doesn't work on it. That's the only bad part about it. And since it's 10 gigs, I'm going to say let's go for fat. Let's format it fat. And I will be putting this in the description link, so stay to check out for that. Alright, cool. It's doing it pretty quick because it's a virtual machine and because there's a 10 gig hard drive and it has 256 megs of RAM and because it has hardware virtualization. And yes, you can make a light version of Windows 2000. That is possible. I will have it in one of my future videos on how to do it. It's pretty similar on how to do it for Windows XP, like when I made that video on how to modify it with Nlight. I could do the same thing with Windows 2000 if you'd like me to. And here we go. Now the setup files are copying to the Windows 2000 installation folders. It really won't take several minutes to complete since we're on a virtual machine and because it's Windows 2000, it's a pretty lightweight OS, so it's not going to take that long. And uh, for browsers, I wouldn't go for Firefox for Windows 2000. I would go with Opera 11.11. .11. That's a good browser for Windows 2000. And I would go with uh, OpenOffice.org, Thunderbird, Skype, VLC, open source applications. And um, you could use Office 2003 on here if you want. In fact, I'm installing Office 2003 in this virtual machine since it's Windows. I'm not going to install OpenOffice. That's on my XP virtual machine. So now I'll set up this copying files. As you can see, it shouldn't take so long. It'll be done soon. And this is an unedited version of the installation, just to see how long it takes. It's going by pretty quickly, it's like lightning for Windows. For, well, for VirtualBox, I would say VirtualBox is one of my favorite virtual machine programs. I do have VMware Player, and I will use it for Linux distros, and I'm going to make videos of that too. Except those might be temporary virtual machines. For Windows, I'd say VirtualBox is good, and for uh, if you want to use DOS operating systems, I recommend Microsoft Virtual PC 2007. Even though it's a bit outdated, it's pretty good still. It does work on Windows 7. In fact, a year ago back, I didn't use before I used to use VirtualBox. I used to use uh, Microsoft Virtual PC 2007. So, anyhow, now it's updating the start environment. We have to press Enter to reboot. 
Don't press anything. This is where the trick is. Okay, there we go. If you're wondering what this is, it's just my wallpaper I created with GIMP. Other than the default one. The reason why I have this to small is because I want to fit more applications on here, as you can see. I'm going to close that window. There we go, that's better. Down here are my apps, i9, Chrome 12, VLC 1.1.10, VirtualBox 4.0.8, Windows Explorer, Windows Media Player 12, Thunderbird 3.1.10, TeamViewer 6, OpenOffice.org 3.3.0, which includes Writer, Calc, Base, Math, Draw, Impress, and here I have Microsoft Office 2010 Home and Student, which includes Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote. And then here, my last item on the super bar, I have GIMP. And GIMP runs actually pretty well on Windows 7. As long as you let, remember to run in compatibility mode for Windows XP Source Pack 3, it'll run just fine. It'll be pretty quick like it is on XP. So that's something to keep in mind here if you want to run GIMP in Windows 7. Alright, getting back on topic. Now here's the Windows 2000 setup. As you can see, everything is, looks ugly because it's in 16 colors. And and usually on an old laptop, if you install Windows 2000, I've discovered this, it's going to be in 256 colors until you install the drivers. Once you install the drivers, you'll get 32 bit color, which will make it much, look much better. And in a virtual machine, all you have to do is install the guest editions, as right here, and it'll look much better. All right. So anyhow, without further ado, let's just see. And press on the set process. Some versions may ask you to put in a product key. Well, this version has it integrated, so you're not going to have to worry about a product key when you install it. And I recommend VirtualBox for Windows 2000. VMware Player will work, but VirtualBox is much lighter on the CPU, which is why I like it. Even though my CPU is pretty good in AMD, Athlon 64, X2, TK53, Dual Core. As you can see, the hard drive, that's the hard drive indicator for the virtual machine, and that's the, uh, the control for the CD. Now everything is working. So now you just wait. It says this will take several minutes. Not in here, it's not. Watch. I doubt it's going to take several minutes. It just says that because on an older machine from like uh, 2000, you would have a Pentium 3, 64 to 128 megs of RAM. If you were lucky, it was 256, and you would have probably like a 10 gig hard drive in it. That's why it's saying it w would, but this is all virtual, so could be different. So anyhow, we just wait. As you can see, it's getting there. Just fine. Obviously, the screen's not flickering yet. Not exactly sure why. If you're wondering what these, this is for the notifications. Where this is for the ID controller, aka hard drive. This is for the ID controller, and it indicates the activity of the CD and DVD devices. And this is for USB devices. This is for network. This is for shared folders. This is for hardware virtualization. And this is for uh, mouse pointer integration and for capturing. And this is just to get your pointer out. So if I click here on my touchpad, and then if I press control, right control, we're out again. So now all you have to do is play the waiting game and see how long it takes. Alright, it's working, we're getting there. Seems fl flickering. It's good stuff. I'm gonna have to cut this down, YouTube, because if I don't cut it down, what's gonna happen is it's gonna be too long a video. Or I could make it into a separate video, but I'm thinking about cutting it down. Seriously, with Camtasia Studio, I'll edit it out. Video edit it. And the next video will be a video of Windows 2000 Professional running in 
for Brew Box. I could do it in VML player, I just don't feel like it. Because I like Virtual Box better. And the video after the next video will be a video of Ubuntu 11.04 running in Oracle VM Virtual Box. And the video after that will be Linux Mint 11 running in VirtualBox and the video after that would be Kubuntu running in VirtualBox and the video after that would be Zubuntu running in VirtualBox and the video after that will be a random Linux distribution running in VirtualBox I can't say that one okay so that, those are my plans for my future videos so you can well plan out on your schedule to watch them And during this video, I'm going to give a couple shout-outs. One goes to Illy649316, one goes to CumberJ001, one goes to 1234CDOB1234, one, two, three, four, C -dub, one, two, three, four. one goes to the PC Trickster, one goes to the Canadian Toast, one goes to, uh, I forgot, Tommy Lachance's channel, it's on YouTube. And one goes to Duramidine. And one goes to Yeldam2 Manly, my friend Manly Evangelista. Or right, anyhow, I'm gonna press next. Next, uh, type in my name. I'm not gonna use my full name for YouTube purposes. Go right, Control L. Properties. Let's look at the device manager. Very similar to Windows XP's device manager, Windows Sevens. And, uh, and as you can see, it's an ACPI PC, uh, and see uh, all the virtual hardware. It's pretty interesting stuff. So on anyway, YouTube, that's the end of that video. Stay tuned for more videos from your number one source for virtual machine videos, Jesse, and there's more number one sources like Gopal Anand, 886, and Dramedy, and CumberJ001 also makes some virtual machine videos, and the other empty manly sometimes does, so check those guys out, they're really good, and they're really nice people too. I'm going to switch out a seamless really quick, right click L, right control L, okay, that was the end of that video, stay tuned for more tech videos with Jesse.